Hello there, welcome back. Good to see you on this channel again. So in this session, we're going to take up an introduction to jQuery. We will see how to download and use the various methods of jQuery in our application. We will focus on applying FX using jQuery. So our discussion in today's session involves the following concepts in jQuery. We'll be looking at the following methods, hide, show, fade in, fade out, fade toggle, slide up, slide down, slide toggle. And we'll also see how to apply CSS FX on an HTML element using jQuery. We'll also look at the following events, click, mouse enter and mouse leave. Finally, we'll be winding up our session by having a quick look at callback functions and what do you mean by chaining in jQuery. I hope that this session will be very useful to you. Just have a look at it and let's straight away start coding now. Let's begin with the demonstrations. The very first thing we're going to see is uh, how to download and use jQuery in our code. So we need to download jQuery. For this, you can go to the browser. Click on this uh, link, download jQuery 3.6.4. And uh, I have downloaded the uncompressed development jQuery 3.6.4 file. So you save this file to a folder. And that folder we are going to open in VS Code. So if you take a look at my VS code, I have opened this folder which contains this file. So this is the very first step and you need to download this file so that you can use the methods of jQuery in your code. Let's start with our first uh, demonstration. Let's uh, begin with a simple HTML page. And what is this demonstration all about is we are going to use jQuery for hiding an HTML element. Here we'll hide an h2 tag. So what is this demo is all about is we'll have a button. When the user clicks on the button, the text pertaining to the h2 tag will be hidden. For this, we'll be using a jQuery method. So that's the demonstration. Let's give the title as demo using jQuery. And this step is very important. See, we have downloaded this file. It's uh, present in our folder. But that's not enough. We should uh, reference that file in our page. For this, we'll be using the script tag. And then we'll reference the file using src is equal to the file that we have downloaded. This is a very important step. Without this step, you'll not be able to access the methods inside the file. Now let's complete the body section. We'll have an h2 tag. Maybe we'll have some text here. Hello. Hope. Oh. You are doing fine, something like that. And uh, we'll have a button. The concept here is when the user clicks the button, the H2 tag should be hidden. So let's uh, have an ID for this button. We'll call the ID to be T. And the text on the button is click on the button to hide the text. A very simple page. So you're able to see the output here. Hello, hope you're doing fine and click on the button to hide the text. Now let's write our jQuery method. So all the jQuery methods will be coming inside the script and whatever code you're going to put, it should be within this method that is dollar document dot ready. And this is the function that we are going to use to call all our jQuery methods. So what is this function? It just ensures that the document object model is ready and then your page is fully loaded and it's fine to execute your JavaScript code now. So JavaScript will be executed when your document is ready. And how is that you achieve that? By calling this specific method. So whenever you're working with jQuery, the very first method within which all your other methods are going to go is dollar document so dollar is the selector so dollar document dot ready it ensures that the dom is ready and your jquery code is ready for execution so that's when this function is going to be called and the very first thing is we have to check whether the user has clicked the button so the event here is click so that's an event and which button the button with the id t so whenever you're accessing an element, you have to use dollar and uh, you're going to access it using the ID. So give an ash and then the ID name is T. You give that within quotes. 
So you're accessing an element using an ID. This is called an ID selector and an event that's going to happen is click. So when the user clicks this button with the IDT, that's the meaning. What should happen? We are just defining a function here, a set of uh, things that can happen when the user clicks on this button. But what should happen according to our demonstration? This specific H2 element that is, hello, hope you are doing fine. This text should disappear or it should be hidden. So for this, we are going to select that tag. So now we are going to use an element selector. Just give the tag name. And then you call this jQuery method dot hide. Hide is the jQuery method. That's it. And when you refresh this page and click on this button, let's see whether a code works. So we have hidden our H2 tag. Very simple. So you call this document dot ready function. Inside this, you define whatever you want to do using jQuery. That is, when you click, this is an event on this button. That's how this event is mapped to an element. What should happen? You select that element and you hide it by calling dot hide. And we're able to see that's working fine. The next thing is uh, what if the user clicks on a button and we should be showing the text back. So for this, uh, let's continue. Say, let me have another uh, button here. So when the user clicks on this button, you should just uh, show that H2 element back to the user. So for this, we'll have a button and uh, we'll call this ID to be some K and uh, click on the button to show the text. Let's define the event here. So when the user clicks, we have to execute a function and which button that is uh, you use, use the selector ID selector. The button is with the ID K. So when the user clicks on this button, what is that we need to perform? We should display the H2 tag back to the user. So again, use the selector that is uh, H2 dot. Now the method is show. Hide is for hiding an element, show is for showing an element. So we have two buttons. When the user clicks on this button, we call hide and hide that element. When the user clicks on this button, we call show and show that element. Let's check whether our demo is fine. So first we'll hide it. Yeah, it's fine. Now let's uh, click on show. We have used two methods. One is hide and show in jQuery. I hope you were able to follow this demo. Now let's take a look at some of the parameters taken by these methods. The parameters are slow, fast or milliseconds. So as the name suggests, say when you give the parameter a slow, it's going to slow this animation a little. Say let's uh, now take a look at this. Now the animation is a little slow. If you want the animation to be very fast, you can give it as fast. You can give it as fast. Now the animation is going to be a little fast. So you can see the difference. And you want to define the animation in milliseconds. You can give, say, if I give 10,000 milliseconds, you're not going to give that in quotes. So just give 10,000. And then now the animation will take the duration of the milliseconds you are mentioning. See, now it's uh, just taking a lot of time because I've given 10,000 milliseconds for hiding and also 10,000 milliseconds for showing the H2 element. Let's click on show. So it's going to take 10,000 milliseconds now to complete this. So these are some of the uh, parameters that these two methods, hide and show, can take up. I hope you are now clear with the very first demo that we have taken, that is uh, hiding an element using jQuery and also showing the element using jQuery. And these two things happened by using the event called click. When the user clicks on a button, we were able to hide or show an element. Next, let's take a look at the following demonstrations in jQuery. The demo is on the following methods, that is uh, fade in, fade out, and uh, fade toggle. Let's take a look at this. Let's start off with a simple web page and uh, the title for this is demo using jQuery. And the very important thing is we should refer to our source file using the script tag. 
and uh, script source that is our jquery file and now what we'll have inside our body section is we'll have an image the source for this image is uh, an image which i'm having called crap.jpg we'll say it's a graph and we'll give some height and width for this image height to be 200 pixels and uh, width to be some 200 pixels okay so that's the image and uh, next we'll have a button so on click of this button the image will fade out and uh, I will have another button when the user clicks on that button the image will fade in so we'll have this button we'll call this ID to be say T1 and the text is uh, we'll say fade out the image next we'll have another button the ID can be T2 and uh, fade in the image so two buttons and you're able to see the output here an image with two buttons next what we'll do is we'll have our uh, script so we'll write our script here as usual whenever you're putting in jquery code you call all a document dot uh, ready so this is the function that we are going to execute And the demo is when the user clicks on a button, the image will fade out. So let's uh, consider the event to be click on which button, say when the user clicks on the button with the ID T1. So you can select that. We already know that that is dollar. You select it using hash the ID name dot the event is click. And when he clicks, this function will execute so that's the meaning here and what is that we are to perform we need to fade out this image for fading out that image we will access that image using the element selector that is the name for that image tag so img dot the method jquery method we are going to use is fade out that's it so we are done with fade out that is when the user clicks on this button the image will fade out so we access that image using the uh, image tag and then we call this method fade out to fade out that image let's uh, check whether a demonstration really works uh, let's click on fade out so you see the image uh, has now faded out and we have another button when the user clicks on fade in the image should uh, fade in for this we'll access this button say this button now is that you're going to access using the id so dollar hash t2 that's the button and when this entire thing happens uh, it'll happen when the user clicks so dot click is the event and uh, what is the function steps inside the function it's just going to be dollar image dot fade in so we are going to fade in that image we will call a dollar img so we select the image using the tag dot fade in so it's very easy you know you want to fade out that image use the tag for that image select that image and then call this method when you want to fade in that image use the selector and call the method the image is going to fade in let's now take a look at this uh, demonstration here fade out it fades out fade in it fades in so that's how you use fade in and fade out and again the 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 parameters for these methods for the methods it's like the same way like we have used with hide and show you can make the fade in fade out slow or you can make the fade in fade out fast or else you can give some milliseconds for the animation say now let's uh, check fade out will be a little slow fade in is fast 
You also can give some milliseconds like you did with Iden show. Say, let me give 10,000 milliseconds for fade out and 10,000 milliseconds for fade in. So now the fade out and fade in will take up the milliseconds. The timing will be according to the milliseconds you specify. Let's refresh. Let's uh, try fade out. So it's going to take 10,000 milliseconds now to fade out. You see the animation is taking the milliseconds that we have given here. I hope you were able to understand fade in and fade out. Let's take a look at uh, the uh, next method that is uh, fade toggle. What is the use of fade toggle? It's like instead of having two buttons, one for fading in and fading out, fade toggle does both these things. For instance, when you click the button the first time, the image will fade out. And when you click the button the next time, the image is going to fade in. So it's going to uh, alternatively take up fade in, fade out uh, actions. Let's uh, try fade toggle. Let's remove all these things. So we, we call, we just have one button for fade toggle. So it's not fade in, fade out in separate buttons. We just say fade out for fade in the image. So we just have one button here and that will toggle between fade out and fade in. Let's access this button. So you use the ID selector as usual, ash T1. Say, I just want to say if, if there is a class name here, say this is the class T1, then how you access that, you use the class selector dot T1. You could either use the class selector, ID selector, or you can go with the element selector, whatever it is. And here we are using the class selector just to understand what a class selector is. It is dot T1. And when the user clicks on the button, we are going to just execute a set of steps uh, in a function, right? And uh, what is that we are going to perform here is we'll access that image using the element selector. So that is img dot fade toggle. That's it. And fade toggle also takes up the uh, parameters like slow, fast or milliseconds. Let us give it a slow. And now let's uh, refresh this. Let's check our output. Say first when I click this button, it fades out. Now when I again click this button, it fades in. So this fade toggle, it toggles between fade out and fade in alternatively. And the parameters taken by this method is as usual, slow, fast and milliseconds. I hope you were able to follow the steps or the demonstrations we have used with fade in, fade out and fade toggle. Now let us move on to our next concept that is uh, animate in jQuery. So let's take a look at our next concept, the use of animate method in jQuery. So for this, uh, what we are going to have here is we'll have the same image and uh, we'll have this button. So instead of saying fade in, fade out, we'll say start the animation. And uh, We are going to have this document.ready function. And when this animation is going to start, when the user clicks on this button, so we are going to have dot t one dot click. And what is the animation on the image? How is that you're going to perform an animation is we are going to call this method animate. You can mention the CSS effects that this uh, image is going to take up when the animation starts. That is from the left, we are going to translate it to 250 pixels to the right. From the left, move 250 pixels. That's the meaning. And uh, we'll also increase the height, height to be 300 pixels. And uh, we'll also increase the width to be some 300 pixels. Let's give a comma and then let's say width this 300 pixels. So this is the use of animate method. You can call this method and then you can give all the CSS styling that you wish to apply on an element. Say, let me save this and uh, start the animation. The animation 
is not uh, actually working according to the CSS uh, styles we have given here from the left move to 50 pixels. So for this effect to come into place, we should position this image to be relative. Let's add a, a style here. Let me position the image to be relative. So this is very important. Uh, say we'll, we'll call this image and uh, position is relative. Let's say from the top one pixel, from the left one pixel. Now let's save this. Let's uh, refresh. Let's check whether our animation really works. Start the animation. Now you see it's moving from the left to 50 pixels. What is that we understand here is when you're going to have a translation like this from the left move to 50 pixels, increase the height and width. So you want this animation to take place. The very important thing is position the element as absolute or relative, but you should position the element first so that the animation takes place. So that is how you use the animate method with jQuery. I hope you were able to follow this. Next, let's take a look at a few more events. We were looking at only the mouse click event. There are a lot of other events in jQuery which you can explore. We'll also look at a few more events like mouse enter and mouse leave. So only when the user clicks on a button, we were looking at uh, certain actions. But here, when the user moves his mouse away from a division, we should alert the user. Or when the user enters a division, we should alert the user. So there are other events too in jQuery which you can explore due to time constraint. We limit our discussion with just click mouse enter and mouse leave. So for this event, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a division. And we'll have the ID for this division to be D1. Let's say this is a division. And I'm going to style this division We'll have the height width of the division and we'll have some background color. So we'll give an height of uh, 200 pixels and width of 200 pixels. And uh, we'll have a background color of aqua. So this is our division and uh, we're not going to have any button here. So when the user enters his mouse inside this division, we're going to detect the mouse enter event and throw an alert message. When the user moves his mouse away from this division, we're going to detect the mouse leave event and throw a message to the user. So let's uh, try writing the code for this. So what is the event here now? That is when the user enters the division. So you're going to have mouse enter. So you're, you're able to see a lot of events here, right? On mouse enter, mouse leave, mouse move, mouse out. So you can very well explore all those things, but here we're just going to use mouse enter. So we'll detect that event and just execute certain steps. What is that we are going to execute here is alert, say you have entered the division. So now let's check this, uh, let's check the output. So this is the division, say when the user enters the division. Okay, the error here is the division ID is D1. So D, let's now check it out. So let's refresh this. So I've given the ID to be a wrong value. That's the issue. See. Now you are able to see the output. You have entered the division. The alert is working. So when this one works, when the user enters the division, is getting an alert message. Likewise, when the user leaves the division, say for instance, dollar, and the division ID is uh, hash d1 dot mouse leave. We're going to have this function, and we're going to say alert. Uh, you have left the division. 
So when the user enters, you're going to alert. When the user leaves, we're going to alert again. Let's check whether this one works. Let's refresh this. User enters, you get a message, you enter the division. When the user leaves, you have left the division. So what is that we understand here is it's not only click, you also have various other events in jQuery. You just call those events and then you define the set of actions that should happen when that event is detected. It's very simple. And I hope you were able to understand the events that we have visited, that is click, mouse enter and mouse leave. Now let us take a look at the next uh, demonstration in jQuery. That is uh, slide down, slide up and slide toggle. So we'll see how these methods are helpful in applying certain effects in our application. So we'll have the same thing here. We'll reference uh, the script. For now, we'll not have any styling as such. We'll come back to style quickly. And what is that I'm going to have here is I'm going to have two divisions and each division will be having a specific styling. Say I have divide e, d1. This is the, uh, we'll say this is the first division. We'll also have another division here. This is the second division. We'll call this, maybe the IDs will give it as first and we'll give it as second. Before even going in for slide up and slide down, what we'll do is we'll apply some styling for our division so that it's uh, visible. So let's uh, give some style here. We'll access the division with the ID first. We'll apply some style. We'll have width to be 200 pixels and height to be 200 pixels. And background color as usual, my favorite color, aqua. Next, we'll also have this uh, division uh, with the ID second. We'll also perform some styling for that. We'll access that using the div ID. And uh, what is it we are going to have for this is again, we'll have some width to be 200 pixels and uh, height to be 200 pixels and background color should be some brown and display. We're not going to display this initially display will be none. Now let us take a look at how slide down works first slide down and slide up right so let's uh, access the division and the user clicks that's what is the meaning here so we'll access the division using the id first when the user clicks on the first division click what is it we are going to perform is we are going to slide down the second division or we access the second division the id for that is hash second and when you want to slide it down, you call slide down. Very simple, straightforward method. That's it. Let's delete this. So what is that we have here? Two divisions. The first division ID is the first, second division ID is second. So when the user clicks on the first division, we are calling the second division and the method we are invoking here is slide down. So the second division will slide down. Initially, the second division is not displayed because we have set the property to be display none in our style sheet. Let's refresh this. Let's check whether it works. See now on clicking the first division, we were able to slide down the second division. That's the use of slide down. And you want this to slide up. You can go with something called slide up. Slide up and uh, we'll will not have display to be none here because we're just going to slide this division up. Let's refresh this. And when I click on the first division, you can see the second division is now sliding up. So for sliding up, the method is slide up for sliding down. The method is slide down. As usual, these methods take the, the uh, parameters like slow, fast and milliseconds. Now the slide up will be a little slow. Let's uh, refresh this and check on this. So that's how slide up works. Like what we have seen in fade in, we also have a slight toggle here. Let's uh, see what is slight toggle. So slight toggle is, it's going to toggle between slide down and slide up. Very interesting method. 
now let's refresh this you see now when i click it slides up again when i click it slides down click slides up click slides down <laughs> sounds interesting huh so that's uh, the use of slide up slide down and slide toggle methods in jquery Now we'll take a look at the use of a callback function. What is the use of a callback function? Callback function. The callback function is executed after an animation that you specify completes and this function will execute. Let's uh, take a look at, uh, let's have this very simple demo we had right earlier. We'll have a button. When the user clicks on this button, let's say the ID for the button is T1 and uh, click here to hide the div. So the division will be hidden when we click on this button. So we'll access the button as hash T1 and click. And what we'll do here is hash first dot hide. We'll just hide it when the user clicks on the div. Okay, so we'll not have any second division here. Let me delete the styling for second division. So this is a very simple demonstration. When the user clicks on the button, the div should hide, right? So that's the demonstration, but here we'll have a callback function. So we'll see what is the use of a callback function here. So after we hide the division, maybe we'll alert the user with a function. So this is a callback function. We just pass this as a parameter. We just pass a function as a parameter to this method. So first the division will be hidden and the parameter it takes is slow. After that, this function will execute and we can alert the user say your division is hidden now, something like that. So what is this callback function? So what is this callback function? It's a function that is passed as a parameter to our methods. And this function executes after the animation takes place. Let's uh, check this out. So first we click here to hide the division. After the division is hidden, after the animation is complete, this function will execute and alert the user. See, now your division is hidden now. That is the function which we have passed as an argument to our hide method. So that's a callback function in jQuery. I hope you were able to follow this. Next concept we'll take up is uh, adding CSS to an element using jQuery. Say you have an element when you click a button, say you add some CSS to that element. Say for instance, I have a division here and I have a button. When I click on this button, I should add some styling to this element. Let's uh, take up that. So I'll be accessing this division using this ID selector ash first. And uh, when you're applying CSS, you call CSS. And then you can, now we can mention all the styling that we want to apply on this specific division. Let me give the font color to be red. When the user clicks the button, this is the font styling that will take place for the text inside that division. Let's save this and uh, we have to change this button. Say click here to apply CSS. Refresh this. Now let's take a look at the output. Say when I click on this button, the styling for this text within this division, that is the text color should be turning red. So we are getting the output here. So that's how you apply CSS styling to any specific element by accessing the element and calling the CSS method in jQuery. So we'll wind up this session with one final concept called jQuery chaining. It's a very simple concept. That is, uh, you can chain a lot of methods together. I'll just show you the demo. Say first I'm calling this method CSS and then I'm applying this specific uh, effect on that element. Now I can also call other methods like hide and then I can say the 
div should be hidden after this uh, method is completed so you can chain a lot of methods together see i can also call in another method fade in and uh, i can say the fade in should be slow something like that so what is jquery chaining you're chaining a lot of jquery methods like this so first this method takes place and then this method and then this method let's save this let's refresh and check our output so first the color will turn to red next the division is going to hide and finally the division will fade in so you see all those effects uh, were in place now and that is called jquery chaining what is jquery chaining you chain a series of methods like this with a dot operator and then every method is going to be called one by one so with that we are coming to an end of this session this is a very short introduction to jquery and we have just focused on how to apply fx using jquery in our application so we have looked at various methods like hide show fade in fade out fade toggle slide up slide down slide toggle and we have seen the other events like uh, mouse enter mouse leave along with the click event and we have also seen how to apply css effects on a specific element by selecting it and finally we have concluded our session with an understanding of what jquery chaining is and also what callback functions are used for with that we are coming to an end of this session if you have any questions please leave your comments below thank you all for listening take care